What's the best time to prune your roses? Also, where do you plant your roses? What are the minimum light hour requirements for roses to succeed on your property? Together, we're also gonna fertilize, mulch, and even whitewash our roses. Hi, my name's Charles Malky, a biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. And today, we're going to be pruning our roses. Here we are mid-March, but the answer to when is the best time to prune your roses, simply go to Google and put in the question, when is my last chance of frost date and put in your zip code and you'll get a chart for typically the united states and it'll pinpoint your particular zip code and for me here in los angeles it's going to say that your first date of chance of frost is going to be mid-december and your last chance of frost is that last week of january so starting february early will be your best time for pruning your roses here we are now mid-March because of the non-stop rain and conflicts with my schedule. I'm gonna be pruning my roses now. And for those of you across America, the majority of America still has not experienced their last chance of frost date. So this hopefully will be timed at a great time for you to be pruning your roses for maximum blooms come later spring and all of summer. According to Dave Austin Roses, it's recommended that your roses should have a minimum of four hours of direct sunlight. However, even if you've got roses, such as here on our property, a rose position on the north wall where it gets zero direct sunlight, your roses can still thrive. Here on our property, our roses are on the north side of our property, which means, and also being on a hillside, throughout the majority of winter, these roses are getting less than about an hour or two of direct sunlight per day, just due to the shadow that's being casted on it from the house. And I'm gonna share with you the results and the damage that these roses have suffered during the coldest and darkest winter nights. So this one is the first of the 16 roses in the hedge that we've got here on our front property. And what I wanna share with you is if you take a look at the tips, a lot of them have died back. And there could be a lot of reasons. Just as the tips are dying back, there's probably below the ground some root death as well. Whether it's from the cold, from just too much rain, root rot damage there could be moles voles and gophers that are you know creating some damage as well and the goal is to prune back on all of the dead growth just like so but we're not just going to prune the dead off i also want to cut it back by a solid at least 30 percent which will strengthen the overall health of the plant and so you can see i took out even some of the healthy green growth and even here i'm going to go and cut back even on this healthy new growth. Again, all of the dead must be removed. We can remove it back to the last green spot or we can strengthen the overall structure by pruning it a little further. And what we're doing by applying this principle of coming back about 30% is we're creating above ground structure that is now going to be more stable with a root base that's actually stronger and more established. And what you're gonna end up having is a plant that's more vigorously growing and blooming and ultimately gonna enjoy more flowers. So again, what we're doing is creating an above ground structure that's smaller and tighter compared to that base. And that's the reason we're coming back about 30% on the overall plant structure. And let's continue pruning back. Well, now we've got 15 more to go. Watch this. So this one over here is a climbing rose on a north wall, meaning this rose gets no sun at any time throughout the entire year. Even the hottest days of summer in the middle of June, most of this is still in the shade. The upper part of the structure does get light and we're just not gonna thin this out a little bit too. But this just goes to show the point that even with no direct sunlight, you can still enjoy the beauty of roses. So the next steps we're going to do simultaneous, which includes mulching, fertilizing, and weeding. The value of mulching is that it's going to help to suppress your weeding by as much as 75%.
Additionally, it's gonna help retain moisture by also as much as 75%. So you won't have to water your plants as much, which is gonna help you conserve water and save money. Additionally, mulching is gonna help in the summer months to keep the soil cool, which helps the plant you know, curb those weather extremes quite well, so they perform better. And in the winter, it has the opposite effect, helping to insulate the soil and keep it warmer. Again, by curbing those weather extremes, the plant's gonna be a lot happier and a better performer from year to year. And additionally, as the mulch breaks down, it's also gonna be feeding your soil. And when it comes to feeding your plants, we recommend that you use the Ivy Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers. So there's a Super Blend as well as the Premium Blend Fertilizers. The Super Blend has a higher NPK and the Premium Blend has a lower NPK. But what's so special about the Super Blend Fertilizer is it also has plus azomite, which is volcanic crushed rock, to give your plants a lot of the micronutrient nutrition. And both the Super and Premium Blend Fertilizers give your plants all six plant macronutrients unlike most of the other fertilizer products on the market that focus on just NPK. Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers have the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, as well as magnesium, which is important for the chlorophyll molecule, as well as calcium, which is found in all of the cell walls, in addition to sulfur, which is very important for the greening of the plants and important in a lot of the metabolic processes. Well, let's get to it. Weeding, mulching, and fertilizing. So we're now gonna fertilize around the base of the rows. And remember in spring, you're gonna to wanna to fertilize it some, maybe half the recommended dose. Remember in May is the most important month for organically feeding your plants. And by feeding them in May, the soil biology, which includes the earthworms, beneficial bacteria, and mycorrhizae are gonna break down these organic fertilizers that are then going to enrich the plant when the plant's metabolism is peaking, which is summer 14 hours of daylight warmer temperatures you're going to want to make sure all those elements are readily available to your plants so those blooms and growth can continue throughout the entire summer and going into fall and then we're just going to mulch now about a two to three inch layer and keep the wood chips away from the plant's trunk so that the moisture from the mulch doesn't um, end up contributing to any stem rot which can actually harm your plants so again, you're gonna build away from the plant's trunk and then add a good two to three inch layer of mulch all around your plants. And then as soon as you water, the fertilizer is gonna to begin to work. So the last thing we're gonna do is now apply the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection, which can be used on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamentals, and so much more. The product is Armory certified, meaning it can be used in organic orchards across the country, in addition to backyard growers that just wanna grow the best, healthiest plants with minimal impact on the environment. If you put paint or tar-based products on your plants, those are designed to last 100 years or more, but as the plant grows, all of those products are gonna end up in your soil, contaminating your garden soil indefinitely. And this is an alternative to those, again, latex and tar-based rose pruned sealers. Um, and again, a healthy way to protect your plants also from weather extremes. We've demonstrated examples of third degree sunburn damage to roses where the branches are exposed to just too much sunlight. You can protect the branches and it can also prune grafting wounds in addition to using the product as a rose prune sealer. So we can seal all of the pruned surfaces. Again, this is gonna keep beetles, termites, and disease out of those wounds. Additionally, we can go all the way up the stems and that'll now offer protection from the sun so that these surfaces don't result in any sunburn damage as well. And instead of repairing sunburn damage, now the plant can focus more so on growing, flowering. A lot of people ask also when applying the products, if you apply it to the buds, can the buds still grow through the product? And the answer is yes. The product again, unlike latex and tar-based products, dries on porous, the buds can easily grow right through the product. 
If you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivorganics, be sure to give us that thumbs up, share us with your gardening friends and family. And for those of you that are new, be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay informed with all of these educational lessons as soon as they become made available. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.